you've seen that the data matrix comes in this cell array called green with each element of that cell array corresponding to a video frame. Now in this video, we are going to convert that cell array into a matrix, into a numerical matrix. So here you see the sizes of the variables and the amount of memory that each variable takes up in MATLAB's buffer. It's quite a lot of memory, so there's really no need to keep both of these variables. And it's also interesting to see that although these two variables contain exactly the same data, the formatting is slightly different and the cell array takes up a little bit more data than the matrix. And that's basically because cell arrays have a little bit of additional overhead for the organization of the cell array. In most cases, you can do all of the analyses having the data stored in a cell array or in a matrix. Sometimes one variable type is more convenient than the other, and sometimes it's just a matter of personal preference. So in fact, we don't actually need to convert the data from a cell array into a matrix for this module, but you'll see that doing this conversion will actually simplify some of the code in the next several videos. On the other hand, because the data set is so large, there's certainly no need to keep both of the variables. So after transforming the data into a matrix format, we're going to clear this cell array out of the MATLAB workspace. All right, so now, as in the previous video, this is a good opportunity to pause the video and work through the partially completed MATLAB code on your own. And when you're ready, come back to the video, and now I am going to switch to MATLAB and show you my solution. Before populating this data matrix, we are going to initialize it with zeros. So I want this data matrix to be camera frames, so the image by time points. So it's going to be the size, so the size of this variable data is going to be the size of an image, it can be any image, might as well pick the first one. So the size of the image, so the number of rows, the number of columns in each frame, and then the number of time points like this. So here we initialize this data matrix. And now inside this for loop, we are going to, uh, oops, uh, unrecognized. Okay, so I guess I wrote that code in a couple of videos ago and forgot to actually run this line. Okay, so now uh, that should work. Okay, so now we are going to populate the matrix with data, one slice, so one time frame at a time. So we are going to set data, all rows, all columns, and the ith time point to be equal to the ith frame of this cell array green. Okay, so let's run this code now, and that creates this data matrix. All right, so I paused the uh, recording there. It took around 15 or 20 seconds for MATLAB to run this for loop here. Okay, so now let's check out the MATLAB workspace. We type whose, and we can see, just like what I showed in the slides, we have this data matrix and the data cell array, green. So how much memory is this, uh, is this variable actually taking up? Well, you know, this tells us how big this variable is in bytes but that's not really human readable. So I'm going to convert this from bytes into gigabytes. So to do that conversion, I copied and pasted the number of bytes, and then we are going to divide by 1024 to the power of three. And it's, it's cubed, it's to the power of three because we have bytes and then megabytes and then gigabytes. So this tells us that this variable green takes up almost seven gigabytes of data are almost seven gigabytes of space. So now I'm going to clear the cell array from the workspace. So I will write clear. Now you have to be mindful when writing clear. If you just write clear like this, it's going to clear out everything in MATLAB's buffer. It's gonna destroy all the work that we've done. We have to go back and re-import the data and all that stuff. So we wanna write clear green, and that only removes the variable green. Okay, so how much uh, gets freed up? It was, yeah, a little bit less than around six and two thirds gigabytes. So now we type whose again, and you can see that the variable green is no longer in here. And basically the entire MATLAB memory buffer now is taken up by this variable data. 
Okay, so now we've had a look at the data. We made an animation of the data. We saw there's that big blur in the background and we've converted the data into a matrix. The next thing we need to do is try to remove that blur from the images and that's coming up in the next video.